Okay. All right. Um, well, first of all, thank you all for coming to our student success um, instructor training. Today we're blessed to have uh, Bob Ballard from Rowan University is going to come and talk to us about LinkedIn and how we can best support our students at developing a LinkedIn profile and using LinkedIn to engage in networking behaviors. Um, over the last couple of years, I worked with Bob um, when I was at the state level working as the executive director of the Center for Student Success. Very fortunate that he and I crossed paths and I was so impressed with the work that he does and he always made such valuable contributions. So we're incredibly grateful um, for him coming here to Middlesex to share his time and expertise with us. So please join me in welcoming Bob. Thank you, Bob. No, and thank you, Christine, um, all the great work that she's done. And plus, I'm not an alum of Middlesex County College, but Middlesex County was the county I grew up in. So I do feel a, a special connection always coming, quote unquote, home. So um, thank you. So tonight, well, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn and networking and networking in general. So um, real quick, how many of you have a LinkedIn? Okay, so this should be fun. So real quickly, before we get into LinkedIn, how do you network? So if I said, hey, what is networking? How do you network? How, so I'm looking at all of you. You're going to have to, you're like, <laughs> you're like I thought this was just, we were going to. So what is networking? So I'm going to have to give you the mic so just everyone can hear you. I talk to people. Yeah. What else? I'll tell you, you look like you have something to say. <laughs> um, I view people's profile on LinkedIn and request them. Awesome. It's attending professional workshops and maybe presenting as well. Great. So everyone's like, oh my goodness, this is hopefully it's not like this the whole time where I thought I was just going to just kind of sit back. But networking for us and for me and Aaron and more of the career development field really breaks down to three different things. So one is the shaking hands, kissing babies type mentality, the old school of what networking is. You go to a random place, you talk to strangers, you shake their hands, you smile, and you quote unquote network. How many of you love talking to random strangers about whatever? How many people like just going up to random strangers and say, hey, let me talk to you? How many of you are like, absolutely not, I cannot wait. I, I hate walking up to random people, <laughs> asking questions I really don't care about, but I'm supposed to be here and do that, right? So that's the one, right? When we tell our students that's so important. And it really is, the understanding of how to interact with people is paramount, especially in everything we do, especially on kind of LinkedIn and our social networks. But one, this is kind of like that traditional. Second thing um, is social media and online. And we're going to talk a lot about that, especially LinkedIn tonight. And the third thing that we tell our students really is that networking is everything that happens when you think no one's paying attention. So everything you do on a daily basis is networking. So we want to get to our students' mindset that everything they're doing, regardless if they're posting on Twitter, if they're on Snapchat, they're on Instagram, or whatever social media feed, what they do in class, what they do in their day-to-day, -day, someone's taking notice. For our students, especially students coming right out of high school, LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter have really taken paramount. And the third part, really, to go back to that, is that idea of social media. So tonight, we're going to talk about LinkedIn in general um, as a real kind of conduit to networking. So really, keys to success in like we're going to show you and your students how to navigate LinkedIn and how to make a really just strong profile and then how to navigate that. So LinkedIn has such incredible functions. So a lot of times this genera generation, Generation Z or millennials or whatever Y or whatever they're calling them nowadays, um, they always get talked about their communication skills are lacking. So when we ask employers, and this is nationally along with Rowan University, and I'm sure the same would be at, true at Middlesex, hey, what's the one skill students need to have going into the workforce, regardless of their age? And it's always communication. Our students in school now communicate better than any generation in human history. It's not even close. Like, if they want to call someone in Europe, they do it in two seconds. If they want to FaceTime with someone in Africa, they can do it in two seconds. So the idea that our students don't communicate is totally false. They do it better than, they just do it differently. So what we want to do is really take the skills that they have and their, their want to communicate and really kind of streamline that in a way that they can use LinkedIn to really facilitate more human interaction, so face-to-face -face interaction. So that's the one thing that we really want to drive tonight, that LinkedIn and social media is a tool to further communication, right? It's not just a platform where you put a picture and you post some things, or it's not like Instagram, or it's not like Twitter where you have a hashtag. No, it, these are conduits back to interaction with people. Just some real quick things about LinkedIn. There's it was 400 million, it's over 500 million people are on LinkedIn now, it's a crazy amount. If you think about social media in general, I heard there's, there's billions of people on LinkedIn. 
excuse me, on social media, not just LinkedIn, billion. So really connect being found. Um, how many of you have heard it's not what you know, but who you know? Right, how many of you in your lives have learned that very quickly that it doesn't always mean just being the most qualified person, that there's a lot of qualified people, but sometimes making that connection to someone else might get you the opportunity of a lifetime. Right, and the scary thing that we want to tell our students is that if 100 people apply to a job, just on pure math, you have a 1% chance of getting that job. You have one out of 100. Right, that's scary, right? The odds don't necessarily look good in your favor. If you network, whether it's via LinkedIn or other social media or traditional networking, you know, if they get an interview, they have a, just say they have a, five people get interviewed. So that's a 20% chance. It's a 20 times better chance just through the idea of quote unquote networking. And it's something that LinkedIn can do, but it's important for our students to know that because a lot of our students will come to, why well, don't know anyone? Right, how many of your students have said, well, I don't really know anyone? Or they run in the same circles as everyone else. So like, well, I don't know anyone that does that. That's totally false. Especially now, especially with a network like Middlesex County College has, and we'll show you that in a second, they know people, and people want to connect with them. Um, powering your career, um, again, this is incredibly important. The entrepreneurial mindset of the internet allows you to do amazing things. So here's the thing today. So for example, this is getting videotaped. 25 years ago, this would be a one-time presentation at Middlesex County College. All of you would see it, and then you may, you probably won't tell your friends, but some of you will tell your friends, hopefully, and then you might impart some more knowledge, and you'll impart some more knowledge. Today, right now, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an artist, if you're putting out quote-unquote content, content, you can do that immediately. They pay people to play video games and beat them. And our students watch hours upon hours upon hours of video games. Not even, they're not even playing, they're watching someone else play the video games, which is crazy. But the amount of content that's out there, so again, powering your career and learning and sharing. And this is the most important aspect of LinkedIn. I think sometimes people miss the fact that, oh, I'm going there to network for myself. It's a very personal. No, LinkedIn, there's probably not a better medium for learning information now out there, especially in a very professional type setting. Now, there is Twitter. Twitter is fantastic for that as well. Um, you can get some other stuff on Twitter as well. But LinkedIn is really something that really drives news, inspiration, um, again, I find out news about Middlesex County College through Twitter, uh, excuse me, through LinkedIn. I find out more information about what's going on in the world through LinkedIn now. So it gives me a nice little feed right at the start of the day. So just to give you some insight, so th for, and this is for Roan University, but there's almost 54,000 people on, Ro on LinkedIn that affiliate with Roan University. 54,000. Right, and those, those are some of them, those are actual people there. And then what it allows us to see, what are some of our top employers? So these are some of the top employers that we find at the university, right? So you see, you know, TD and Enterprise and Drexel University is up there and Amazon and Lockheed Martin's our leading employer of our students. And that's great, but here's the thing. I'm not the only person that needs to know that. And the great thing about LinkedIn is that all of you can know that too. How many of you have looked on Middlesex County College's alumni site for LinkedIn? So what we're going to do right now is that we're going to do the same thing but for Middlesex County College. You're going to see where your graduates are going and how many connections there are. So really all you have to do is type in Middlesex County College. I've already obviously searched that today. So this is going to come up for me, and this is, granted, this is my LinkedIn profile. So um, I'm connected to four people that work at Middlesex County College. But what you do, and you can search pretty much any higher education entity, and all you have to do is hit see alumni. And actually, I'll just go back real quick. You can see the mission, all the news, where they're from. But again, see alumni. You have almost 24,000 alumni that are on LinkedIn that list Middlesex County College at some point. Now, they may not have all graduated, so I know I'm looking at Director of Alumni Relations, and you're like, it's not always the best form of information, but there's 23, almost 24,000 uh, people that filled it out. So you could look at, hey, where are they working? So what are the largest employers for our students? So, and the great thing about this is you get some real insight. So where do students at Middlesex County that graduate from Middlesex County College or go to Middlesex County College work? Johnson Johnson, Robert Wood Johnson, Amazon, AT&T, Bristol, Bristol Myers Squibb, JFK Health, Merck, Verizon. These are things that are right on the internet for anyone right now to look for. 
Another great tool for you to use, again, is what kind of, what do they do? Are they in operations or they're in sales and business development? You can see that all there. Also, depending on the size of your institution, you can find out where they go. So apparently there's a nice little cluster of Middlesex County college graduates in Atlanta. Again, and this is incredibly important because for a lot of our students, they say, hey, I don't have that network. Any of your students right now has a network of at least 24,000 just by starting, just by coming here. Right? Think about you for your institutions or your master's institutions or your doctoral institutions. We can search all of them. If you went to a larger or I'll just say an older institution, you probably have more connections. You're looking at some of the old, like just say a Rutgers probably, I would guess it's probably over 80, 90,000. Again, just by putting that you came here. Again, so the idea of trying to get to know someone. And the most important thing for you and most important thing for the students is that they can go by, down by that. So for example, if you have a student that wants to be a pharmacist, or your student's like, hey, I want to go to medical school. Like, that's funny, we have 128 people that work at Robert Wood Johnson. And the thing is, you can click on that and you can see who they are. So you have a dietitian, you have a, you have a graduate student, you have a rehabilitation specialist, and it's all right there. So again, sometimes it's hard to connect to our students, well, who from here does that? Now as a practitioner, you can show them. No, we have, you name the field, with 24,000 people, you could probably find that. Also, it's great for kind of connecting back to businesses or organizations to come in to talk to your students. It's like, hey, we'd love someone from pre-health to come talk to our students. Do we have someone that, wait, Robert Wood Johnson in New Brunswick, it's very, very close by, can we bring them in? And that goes down the board, and notice, look at the companies there, for, and this is, when you have Johnson & Johnson's and Merck's and Bristol Myers, Myers Squibb's, you have a lot of different options. Also, you have someone who lives in Norway, which is great, but, <laughs> so again, the network is not just in here in Middlesex County, but very, very far-reaching. And this bottom question, what are the top skills of our graduate, this comes out more and more when you do the searching. So for again, before we even start to show our LinkedIn profile, you can just see the absolute network that everyone, every student here, every person that works here. So some real quick facts before we get into building your, um, your profile. One, adding a profile picture, 14 times more likely someone to view it than not. So if you don't have a picture, you need to find one. This is incredibly important. This is not like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. It has to be somewhat professional. So again, it, and, I tell, and we tell students sometimes, the easiest way to take a somewhat professional picture is go to Snapchat. Put on a business top of any kind. So if it's a shirt, a tie, a jacket, take a selfie. Find the filter that you look best in, usually not black and white, but if you just scroll over, don't put anything else in there, don't put any, copy it, and you can use it as a headshot. So if you're looking for a very easy way to find a headshot for minimal money other than downloading Snapchat, you can do that, and it, it comes out pretty good. Now, if you can afford a professional headshot or if there's an event on campus that provides professional headshots, I'm looking at a room of professionals, they're, they're incredible to have because how many times do you get asked for one? You, I feel like I always get asked for one when I don't have one. I'm like, oh my goodness, I, like there's me at the beach and there's me at the pool and I'm like, I'm not showing anyone that. And so the big thing that we wanna make sure that we drive home to students and we drive home to our practice, that you can do this right at home very easily. So professional headshot, you could do it yourself. Again, Snapchat filters, you can go find a nice blue one or a nice warm one, whatever makes you look, you feel the best in and go right from there. Um, 13 times members who include skills. Again, you want it, this is important. So it's not like you're giving bare bones. For LinkedIn, you're opting in to share. So if you're going to use a LinkedIn profile, we ask you to be a little bit more forthright. Now this is professional you. It's very rarely that you put more personal type things on there, but again, if you're making the kind of the decision to do this, you need to kind of go all in with that. Um, 10 times with education, um, more views, five times um, when you join active groups. And the one that really sticks with me is 42% of hiring managers served by LinkedIn said they view volunteer experience as equivalent to formal work experience. We have a lot of students that are trying to break into their fields. Right? They might be working now and don't have the time to take on an internship or an unpaid internship, but they can volunteer. So just by volunteering, they can get the experience that might be seen by an employer to get their first opportunity, and they can do this all by LinkedIn. And, and if you were to think 20 years ago, 
how would you get the word out about yourself? So if you graduated college in the early 90s, what would you do? So you would mail your resume, right? You would show up to places of employment and say, I'd like to work here. Where's HR? I'd like to drop off my resume. If someone tried to drop off their resume now, they'd probably call security. Like, well, <laughs> but again, there's an opportunity. So think about how long that would even take. So for example, if you are in education, you're like, I want to teach in Middlesex County. There's lots of schools. Trying to break in to find every, or find a board member. Now, one place, right online, you can put all that information there. Again, it goes a long way, and especially if it feels like business or recruiting or marketing, you have all the information that you want to see there. So real quick, building your profile. So this is a, pro a mock-up profile. So first thing is the photo. I would always ask for students to unless you don't want a photo for personal reasons, or, but if, you, if there's no personal reasons or to not have a photo, I would definitely try to put a photo up. Again, low tech, go to Snapchat, you can use the filters. Twitter, anything like that is fine. It should be pretty close up though. Also, it's better if you put something that's a little bit more bland behind you, like a brick wall would work great or a white wall works perfect. Make sure it's like a one-off type of thing. Um, if not, professional photos are fantastic. If you can get a, a headshot, it's really gonna be a game changer for you. Headline, so think of a headline as kind of what you're doing now or what you really wanna do, what the aspiration may be. So headlines, and the next line down is kind of a summary. The headlines are the old objective in a resume. And the objective in a resume served the purpose of telling someone in HR that I just received a thousand, thousand resumes in the mail. You need to tell me what job you're applying for. Now that we apply online, we don't need them anymore in our resumes, right? So how many of you apply to any job online? How long does it take you to apply to a job online? Like an hour. Like there's no doubt after you apply to this job that you're absolutely applying to this position. So with that, you take that off of your resume and you put it here. So again, when you're not necessarily actively applying but you wanna show people your field or what you're doing, it's a great place to put your title. So if you're the head of guidance or you're the head of alumni relations or you're a student success professor, put something like that that's gonna be catching enough to pretty much let me know that what you're doing. For our students, what are, I see up there, I like the aspiring financial analyst, you know, so what are some suggestions that you would give for students? I mean, do you recommend that they put their major or they're aspiring to or um, something else because they don't, I, I think they often feel like, you know, um, not too confident about what they can put in this section as they're developing. I would say yes to all those. Anything that pretty much shows, so even if they're looking to go to law school, I mean, think about it this way, you, you're telling a student, you're telling someone what you may want to do. So if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, especially if you're in school still, school gives you that flexibility to pretty much say, I'm chasing this. Now, be mindful if you're in a very established career and you're chasing something else, people will see this. But if you're in school and you want to be a lawyer, aspiring lawyer, great. Um, you know, college student looking to go, great. I'm um, trying to get into this field, fantastic. It's a really good way to show someone what your aspirations are, what you want to be doing. If you're already cemented in your field, you usually put your job title or something a little bit more catchy than that. Um, next line down is your summary. So a summary is a great way to pretty much break down everything about you in about four to five lines. Now, um, you'll see this on a lot of people's resumes as a summary qualification. So a lot of people said, you know, we're not going to have an objective anymore. We're going to have a summary qualification. It pretty much describes me in three or four or five kind of lines, and we're going to put it at the top of a resume. That's what students should be doing. And now if they're a student with minimal experience, it's probably going to be very short, which is okay. They can talk about their aspirations, which is a good thing. If you have a career and you've been doing it for 30 years, this is a fantastic way of showing someone, hey, you don't have to read on anymore. I've done all this amazing stuff. The goal of the summary, especially so if you're – a student looking to get into careers to pretty much tell them what you're looking for and what you're interested in some of the things that you've been doing now. If you're cemented in your career, your goal should be that someone should stop reading that right there and know they can hire you or work with you or network with you just based off that alone. They shouldn't even have to read on. Again, three to four lines is perfect. You don't want to go crazy. Please also watch out for buzzwords. There's one thing to call yourself. So when we ask students, how many of you are hardworking? I have never met a student that hasn't raised their hand for hardworking or any really good word I say. Any. So be mindful. If you're saying those things, those words should really exude out through your, out your profile. This is much like a resume. If you're calling yourself hardworking, it should scream hardworking in your resume. 
If it doesn't, that's a major, major issue. Next down, you'll see pretty much experience here. Um, please tell your students any experience is a good experience, Re whether it's vol a kind of an internship of volunteering. Um, the big thing that we want to make sure our students and people understand is that everything connects. So yes, you work at as a camp counselor. That might not be the thing that makes you a lawyer, but a lawyer drops their son or daughter off at that camp every day, that might get you an internship. That might get you a clerkship. That might get you the opportunity. And that's why we want to kind of go back that networking is always important because they never know who's taking notice of what they're doing. All those little things that they're doing, whether they're working in fast food. Again, we tell our students they provide you such transferable skills. You may not want to work in fast food for the rest of your life, but you probably learned how to work under pressure. You probably learned how to work with people. Um, you learned to handle, like there's a lot of great things that come with that. You want to make sure you get that on your LinkedIn profile, and also you want to get it on your resume. Next is organizations. You always want to make sure that your st our students are involved in anything, um, regardless if that's more of a personal involvement or a school involvement or a professional involvement. Um, it's the best way to meet people. It's the best way to put yourself out there and make sure you're explaining that there. Also, this is a great way to show leadership um, positions as well. Um, next is education. This is something that this is near and dear to my heart as well, obviously, but make sure they put their, if they go to Middlesex and they graduate, and even if they go on to get a doctorate and 10 doctorates, the, it's okay for them to still list that they got an associates at Middlesex County College or any school. Anytime you get a degree, it should go on your resume. I know sometimes people shorten that and won't put a bachelor's if they have a doctorate. For me, you did the work, you got a degree, it hangs on the wall, you probably should list it on your resume. This is a great place to obviously put it on your LinkedIn profile as well. Um, again, is GPA important? Maybe, depending on the field you want to get into, but what's more important is showing that you have the education that's needed for your position. Other things, so volunteer experience, we talked about volunteering, what that means. Make sure that they're putting that volunteer experience on their resume, on their LinkedIn profile, and it doesn't matter what it is. So if they volunteered at, you know, Alex's lemonade stand or for breast cancer, it doesn't really make a difference, or if it's for a religious organization. If it is for a religious organization or a political party, which is still very good, make sure it talks about what they did as a volunteer as opposed to the political party's leanings or the religious institution's teachings. So they could teach Sunday school. They might not talk about the beliefs of their religion, but they'll talk about how they taught children. Again, that's still a fantastic experience. Same thing if they were helping a political party there. Last thing, and this is something important, skills and ex expertise. So the way LinkedIn works is that you get to pretty much nominate yourself for any skills or expertise. The great thing that LinkedIn does is that it allows people to kind of second that and pretty much say, yes, that person has that skill. So yes, teaching, April, yes, you're a tremendous teacher. I'm gonna say April's a tremendous teacher. And you'll see those kind of, kind of add up. So when people scroll down your resume, it's one thing for you to say that I'm a great teacher or I'm a great whatever. It's quite another when you see 60, 70, 80, 90 other people say yes, they exact, they definitely have something like that. Again, very, very important. The big thing that LinkedIn and to tell students or anyone is that this should almost mirror your resume. If you're not sure what it should look like, think about what would you put on a resume? What would I want an employer to see? What would I want someone that may hire me to see to kind of make that connection there? Other things on there, honors and awards, um, something sometimes people leave off. Courses, uh, this is tremendous for students that haven't broken into the field yet but wanna show an employer that they have experience. So for example, if you wanna be, um, if you're looking to get into, a, just say a marketing agency, but you've taken marketing and finance and the math classes, but you haven't had an internship, it's a great way to show them that. It's also a great way to put it there. Once you get to a point in your career that you have degrees, you probably should take them off. Again, much like a resume, um, we always ask students, do you like to read? And when most students tell us no, which scares me, but once they tell us no, we pretty much say, okay, so much like that sense, we wanna consolidate this to the most important information possible. So same thing with LinkedIn, putting up the most important information possible. If you've been working for 20 years, no one really cares what you took freshman years in undergrad, 
right? That's probably only taking up more space on your resume or space on your LinkedIn profile that you can put something much more beneficial. Um, something like projects works well. I've seen students do this and do a really great job with that just to show that, hey, I've done some leadership. Again, it's a great way for a student to show, even though I haven't been involved in the field totally, that I, I've, I've done some leadership. The last thing you're going to see is their recommendations. Now, recommendations have become a little bit more passe. LinkedIn, it used to be like you needed to get recommended and you would seek out recommendations. Now it's a little bit different. Um, they don't hurt though. Also on the flip side, tell your students, recommend people. You don't wanna be the person that has 35 recommendations about you, but you haven't sent one out yet. Again, a lot of times we tell students a good rule is it should be at least equal, if, but you, or you're recommending more people than you're receiving recommendations. But a great way to do this, ask someone, ask a previous boss, hey, can you write a three, four sentence blurb about what I did? Again, it's at the bottom of your LinkedIn profile, which means they'd have to scroll all the way to the bottom. Much like your resume, you're not necessarily putting this at the top of the page, but if I scroll down and find out that my connection recommended you, I'd probably give it more weight. So again, it helps to have those, and it, it gives us kind of a good kind of talking point for students that, hey, what did you do with this job? Oh, my previ previous boss said I did a great job. That is, a, that is pretty much the profile. And the great thing about LinkedIn is that it helps you do every step of the way. I wanna talk now about more of the pressing questions as for students and practitioners and businesses. So first, who do I connect with? Now, do you think you should just connect with everyone aimlessly, just start throwing out the widest net possible? Probably not, right? So the big thing, and we had a great discussion before this is about, it depends on what your goal of LinkedIn is. So if you're, a, if you're in the field and you've been doing it for years on end and you wanna make sure you can stay connected with some colleagues in a professional manner, you're probably not gonna have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of connections. On the flip side, if you're someone newer in your career and you're trying to grow your kind of brand or you're trying to do some things, you may expand your network. One thing on LinkedIn, I will say this, is that after 500, it stops counting. You can see it, no one else can. So when it says 500, it's 500 plus. So a lot of times students are told, hey, you should search out 500 connections. For many of them, that's not very hard. Also, with these connections, it's not like Facebook. On Facebook, you probably should know all your friends. Probably, most of them. You may have went to high school with someone, you're like, I'm not really sure, but maybe. But again, Twitter, you're gonna connect with people that may not follow you back. You're doing it because you're interested. With this, you're not following celebrities, you're not connecting with celebrities in that sense. You're connecting with people in your industry. Also, and I asked kind of this on the bottom, do you need to know them that well? No. If they're in your industry, like so for tonight, after this, I may go home and connect with everyone in the room, right? Only because we all work at a higher education institution. Um, student success is near and dear to my heart. I teach a student success course at Rowan. Um, I, was, we, I was on a team to help develop it. I love this field. Um, we work very, very closely with the community colleges. So we're all in very similar work. So it wouldn't be out of the question to say, hey, we work together kind of tangentially today that we would connect. Now, if I'm a random person from South Jersey with no connection, you may want to ask yourself, hey, why are they trying to connect with me? So again, that's where you have to kind of ask yourself that question. Also, the great thing about LinkedIn, when someone does connect, it tells you how many people you have connected in common. So sometimes you can connect the dots. Like, wait a second, I know someone who works at Rowan, who works in alumni, who works in careers, that's why they're connecting with me. Or, oh, they're, they're connected with Christine, and they're connected with Larry, they must have done work with the community college, I can understand where the connection lies. You don't have to connect with everyone. I can tell you, and I'm sure everyone that's been on LinkedIn, you get some random, random connections. Like zero, like I'm not even sure how you found me kind of connections. But the whole nature of LinkedIn is to make sure that you are broadening your network in that sense. Um, what is an all-star profile? You're gonna hear that a lot. LinkedIn has done a great job of incentivizing, getting you to do more things to build your LinkedIn profile. So you'll see you start off as a beginner. The end is an all-star. So all-star pretty much means that you filled in most of the sections you have a picture and you're engaging in the site. For a lot of our students, this is a great way to tell them, this is something you should shoot for. It's not very hard to get at, but it's something you just have to engage in the site a little bit. Um, is your information private? I'm gonna ask just another, is any of your information on the internet private? No. Again, remember, LinkedIn is a choice. 
You're choosing to opt in to share this information. Now, for many professionals, it's no different than what I would find on any. So if I looked at Middlesex County College, I would probably find your bio somewhere or your other place of work. I'd probably find your bio where I'd probably find similar information across the board. So again, it's not something at that level, but is it private? No. If you're concerned about your privacy, LinkedIn is not the social media place for you. Really, social media in general is probably not for you if you're really concerned about your privacy. Um, if you're more concerned about keeping a smaller network, that's one thing. But again, there's no blocking, there's no privacy settings like that on LinkedIn in the sense that I can only share some things. You're sharing or you're blocking. There's kind of, the, there's two limits there. Um, we get this a lot from our students. Is LinkedIn like my resume? It should be. Now, it might not always say the same exact things. Like, for example, um, I know some people use LinkedIn for different mediums. So, for example, if it's, you have a, um, if you have your own personal business, you're using LinkedIn versus what you're doing in your day-to-day -day job. That's another thing. Um, also, it's a great way to kind of show, showcase yourself in a lot of different ways. Um, the, best, the best part of that, the best part about LinkedIn versus your resume is that your resume is very stagnant. Like, so if you present it at a conference, you put it on conference presentations, you write it, great. You present it on a conference, you could post the picture on LinkedIn and tell all your friends and tell all your connections and then tell their connections. And then all of a sudden, instead of just being a random line on your resume on, or your CV on page two or three, 2,000 people could have seen it right away. It's a fantastic way to kind of self-promote. And I don't necessarily mean in a kind of a boastful way, but if you're doing amazing work, especially for an organization. Like, so for me, I work for Rowan. Almost everything I do is Rowan-centric, right? So we have career fairs, we post those because it gets more advocacy about what we're doing. Again, so if you're working for a large organization, whether it's, you know, even if it's, you know, a student success initiative here at Middlesex County College and you're trying to show the community, hey, we do this here, you should come to Middlesex. Because, I mean, this is a great way to do it. And all of a sudden, someone outside your network shares it or connects with you and shares it again. It kind of goes down the road that way. So you can get 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people to connect on a single picture of you just presenting at a conference. So again, it's, it's incredibly important in that sense because it brings such a level of advocacy that a line on your resume would just kind of get blown. Oh, that you presented at a conference, that's great. No, we did this and we're trying to do some other things. We talked about why is this important and this is the kind of something that we kind of want to close out with, but why is this important? Because this is what drives the world of work now, right? This is, this is what we're seeing. The idea of networking, and then we go back to the beginning part, networking used to really being getting in front of people, right? That was your goal. Now in 2018, this is how you get in front of people. I can tell you to go back to a post that um, on an event we worked with Christine with here where there was a, a conference about careers here, there were th 200 people at the conference. A couple people posted on LinkedIn. I had almost 3,500 people look at my post. I know someone else probably had similar numbers look at their post. So just, just think about your reach. You reach 200 people in a room and hopefully they enjoyed themselves. But just by taking a picture of it and writing a line saying, thanks for a great day, 3,500 people saw it. Another 60 or so engaged in it. Other people started writing stuff on it. And that's where the big difference is between really resume writing and really kind of taking what you're doing, getting out there in the world. The days of you just walking around with your resume and going up to someone and say, I want you to hire me, they don't happen as much anymore. How are people in most fields finding about what you're doing? It's probably this. And to grow your network that way, it used to have something on LinkedIn where they said if it used to said what your third connections were. So it's like seven, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but think only your third degrees. So if you had about a thousand followers, it connected you almost nine million people. So think about that level of reach, connecting to nine million, which is crazy. But again, you don't know who's going to see, you don't know who's going to interact with, you don't know who, that someone might be able to make a decision to help you. Um, on the student side, that student's going to be alum, that alum may be able to donate money. Right, they might be able to invest their time. So why is it important? This is your 21st century resume. This is what we tell students. Now, is it right for all fields? No. Some law enforcement fields, I can't imagine that we would say, hey, put all this information out there. 
right? There's some other fields you're probably less forthright of sharing things. Like if you're in education, especially K through 12, there's a level of importance of having something like this, but it's probably very basic in saying, um, this is what I've done, this is where I've gone to school, things that they can find on a basic bio. I can tell you how many times of stories come out every week of someone in K through 12 putting something in a social media context that is taken out of proportion or out of context or whatever it may be. So again, if you're trying to minimize your footprint, you can do that. But for most of our students, most of our alumni, the way they're going to be seen in this new age is through mediums like this. Now, another great thing that also LinkedIn has, it's kind of mirrored Twitter, you can start doing things by hashtags. So you put a hashtag in and you can search that. So for example, if first year experience is something that you're serious about, you can set up your news to get everything about first year experience or higher ed or hiring. It doesn't make a difference. LinkedIn has really transcended the idea of just being a professional, professional kind of social media outlet to now being a legitimate news outlet where you can get all this information but lastly, where you can connect with a lot of different people. So to kind of, so if you do need a resource, um, my graphic design skills did not do this site any justice, so I just left the web website up there, linkedin.com slash help slash LinkedIn. Any question you would ever want about LinkedIn is there, ever. Like it is probably the most robust help site ever. There's so many drop downs and so many things you could look into. So if you're not sure how to do something, um, there's also a lot of why questions. Why would I do this? LinkedIn has done a very good job of making sure that you are prepared and understand what you're doing when you go into LinkedIn. Oh, perfect. Um, lastly, um, again, so when we think about networking, I think about this um, proverb a lot. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. This is probably your best way in our digital world in a professional setting for you to go very, very far. Thanks. Please join me in giving another round of applause to Bob. Thanks so much for um, giving us that great overview. I hope it got you thinking about your students and maybe your own professional LinkedIn profiles as well. Does anyone have any questions for Bob? Okay. So um, sometimes I feel a little disconnected with uh, what students think are cool. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so my question is, um, for students that are coming in, do what is their overall impression of LinkedIn? Because I know I'm a little disconnected from it, only just speak. I just looked at my profile, and I'm like, oh, I need to update. <laughs> you know, so I'm just curious. I haven't actually ever talked to students about it. So are they normally familiar with it and very like, oh, yeah, that's cool, or are they a little disconnected from it? I'm just curious. So I can only speak from our students. They're disconnected from it. Um, I think a, something that I've and some other, we stopped trying to make it cool. We've been much more blunt about what it does. The one thing LinkedIn, it's not Snapchat. It's not, it's like there's no, it's, there's no LinkedIn stories. Like I'm not scrolling through in the morning like, oh, I can't wait to find out what this person did last night. It's not, it's not predicated like that. Um, LinkedIn's done a very good job of taking some of the tenants like, a ha like hashtags where you can search down. Now you could do this on Twitter too. Like you can put in first year experience and find probably great information about that. Um, the one thing that we've kind of, we try to disconnect it from being cool and the thing that more in, this is how you're going to network and find a job. So nationally, the number of students looking for a job, they say is about 85 to 90%. For our students, it's probably closer to the 90%. If you make it sound like, hey, this is something you can do now with very low stakes. And I think this is, goes back to students, especially students coming in now and um, of, uh, students of all ages, there's a level of comfort now using the computer. For a ma vast majority of our students, this is a level of comfort using social media. This is a very easy way for them to make a check like, yes, I've done something to help my career today, even just by filling out a LinkedIn profile. And for most students, LinkedIn has done a very good job of incentivizing it by getting f you know, connections and followers and pr completing that. But the one thing that works for us is that we tro stopped trying to make it cool and started to try to make it, n I don't wanna say necessary because it's not necessary for all, but really functional is probably the best word. Um, it was, it's been a few years since I started my LinkedIn profile, so I'm just w thinking about my students, and does LinkedIn have the ability to start the account but not make it live?
because I worry about grammar and and what they put out there. And I think, you know, I, I think I I think some students may need some help. And I don't know if that's through career services or another office on campus, just to kind of look it over before they, you know, make it active. So it's something that you'd have to want to look before you act because it's more of the choice to make it active. So it's kind of behind the scenes there, but. Um, it's more about their level of connection. So it could be something that for even like a, a first year um, in initiative or a kind of a student success initiative that, hey, we're gonna show you something that's a little bit more professional, even if you're doing it for a classroom basis, which allows you to do some, you know, hey, I'm, I'm gonna grade your ability to do something like this. Um, I know in other classes that we've had, it, we've done Twitter chats and we've done other social media experiments where it kind of forces students to get out there. Obviously it's tough to force students to have a you know linkedin or any social media platform but it could be something that you can mock up yourself and say hey you know i'm looking at these three key areas where the summary is key your name and you'd be surprised how much your name is probably misspelled and um and really you're kind of that description there and that really comes down to first impressions and that's something our students don't sometimes encapsulate so it's the first seven seconds um we are in an instant gratification kind of society now and and I, I always ask students this, um, how many of you make decisions on things in seven seconds or less? And everyone raises their hand. And that's what we do. And then you make snap judgments and then you never get that back. Um, the important thing for something like this and what we tell our students, LinkedIn, your resume, think of it as a paper. If I found your first mistake, I fail you. Like, how, I always make the running joke, how many of you proofread your papers for English or comp? And they're like... Well, here's the thing, what happens if I told you the first mistake I see, I fail it, I rip it up, I throw it out. And they're like, oh, well, that's the least B work. Like I had a student say, that's the least B work. I said, well, B work won't get you a job. B work won't get you hired. So again, if you're looking for an assignment type out of the way, say, hey, can I have you just fill these in for me? And then, hey, this is how you could do it. That might be a really good connection. Um, to go back to your initial question, it's usually when you're putting it live, it's there. Um, the only good thing for that, if they're starting, they won't have any connections. It, it, you don't necessarily run into people's profiles that you don't have connections with. So like, so like I said, in the room, we're all in higher ed, we're probably connected somehow if you have LinkedIn. If you're just a random person starting today with limited keywords, you're probably gonna have to search very, very hard to find that person's profile. One real good thing to tell students that they really like this, you can see who search for you. That's something that's very unique in the sense that in like in Twitter and Instagram, you really don't get to see like, wait, who's been on my profile? Um, you can teach students how to make it anonymous, which again is all right, but also just know that they won't be able to see you search for them. It's kind of a trade off. If you want to see, you got to let people know when you looked at theirs, but if you make yourself anonymous, you're pretty much totally anonymous. And it just comes up as like, I, for here would probably say, you know, professor at Middlesex County College. It would give a very broad, or someone in the education industry in New Jersey. Like it gives you a very broad kind of context there.